Welcome again to this uh, fourth part of the uh, five part series on the Jewish uh, wedding model. And um, I'm happy that uh, it is uh, another good Sabbath the Lord has given unto us so that we may fellowship with him and he may be able to uh, bestow us upon the double portion of blessings of the Sabbath. And so I'd like to welcome all of us and uh, uh, I want us to pray and be able to share in the word of God where today we are dealing with this theme, uh, an Adventist home at last, each thriving in their own sphere. Shall we be able to humble ourselves and pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are so glad that uh, you love us and uh, you have given us a Sabbath, Lord, to sanctify us and to wash us, to cleanse us from every impurity. And that, uh, Father, you may present yourself uh, a chaste woman, uh, a bride without a spot. And so as we learn these thematic connections between the uh, literal marriage and uh, the plan of redemption, Lord, we ask of thy wisdom from above. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I want to thank the Lord uh, so much for the information that uh, we have shared already. And uh, I believe that uh, each one of us is being blessed by what the Lord is doing for us. And so today, as I have said, it is the fourth part of uh, the five part series. And uh, tonight we are dealing with an Adventist home at last each thriving in their own uh, sphere. And so I, I like to visit this issue of uh, each one understanding their sphere in the marriage institution. Uh, I'm not per se saying that uh, we cannot help each other in the issues in marriage, but uh, it is good for everyone to understand his or her sphere in the marriage institution so that uh, everyone may work on excelling in the part that they have been given in the marriage uh, institution. And so um, I haven't been quoting from E.G. White and the spirit of prophecy that much. I have been just been looking at the historical background and then being able to quote some few verses there and do the thematic connection. But uh, today you will allow me to go into E.G. White and look at uh, what an ideal Adventist home looks, at, looks like, what an uh, ideal Adventist home uh, looks like. And so if you have a people who are colliding in their spheres, then you will not have everything accomplished as it should be accomplished. So it is good for a man to understand his fear. It is good for a woman to understand her fear. And then we shall have uh, that um, uh, harmonious uh, marriage, each one thriving in their sphere and helping uh, or uh, 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 being able to help the other party where they are weak and uh, uh, being able to support them where they are strong. And so allow me just to go to uh, the health uh, uh, reformer. That is uh, uh, the health reformer, July 1, 1873. And uh, I'll be able to share with us on our screen so that uh, we may look at these things uh, and understand our spheres as we look uh, into the whole issue. We must come back. This is understanding our own sphere and thriving in it. We must come back to our point, which is not to urge you all to give yourselves to mission work but to serve God more in connection with your daily calling. I have heard that a woman who has a mission uh, makes a poor wife or a bad mother. This is very possible and at the same time, very lamentable. But the mission I urge 
is not at all of this sort. Dirty rooms, slattery gowns, children with unwashed faces are swift witnesses against the sincerity of those who keep other vineyards in neglect their own. Contingent on, I have no faith in that woman who talks of grace and glory abroad and uses no soap and water at home. Let the buttons be on the shirts, let the children's socks be mended, let the house be as neat as a new pin, and the home be as happy as a home can be. Serve God by doing common actions in heavenly spirit, and then if your daily calling only leaves you cracks and crevices of time, fill them up with holy service. This is uh, uh, the health reformer, E.G. White, quoting Spurgeon. Health, uh, the health reformer, July 1, 1873, and uh, we are looking from paragraph nine. She continues to say that, um, I am delighted to find the following in that invaluable work entitled The Young Ladies Counselor by Reverend Daniel Weiss, AM. It can be obtained at any Methodist book rooms. You understand that uh, E.G. White had uh, uh, the background of Methodist connection, and so she will be in uh, possession with the, the books from that denomination. And uh, she knew what was good to be quoted, and she knew that which was not good to be quoted. Then permit me, by way of illustration, another feature of this question. And so we, we want to look at um, uh, this sphere of a woman and the sphere of a man and uh, how they can thrive in it and how God looks at it. Is the services that the woman offers at home as a home missionary inferior to the services that the man offers in the field? We are looking at an ideal, at last, an ideal Adventist home at last. And uh, if we consider the things that we are talking about, then we shall find ourselves being at the right sphere and not colliding, but helping each other, even in our ways of salvation, so that there may be no complaints here and there. And, you know, understanding our spheres in the home circle will also help us to understand our sphere in the church so that um, people may not be uh, um, jostling for positions and uh, trying to be what they are not in the church. It is the, because of the problem that you are having at home that makes even the church setup be very difficult to handle in that people are vying for positions, people are craving for positions that they are not fit for. And this is because they have not learned their sphere at the home level because the church, the, the, the church itself is an expansion of the family. The church starts at home. Then when we reach in the church, it is just a fellowship of the people who have already received Christ and they have come to share their experiences together. And so continuing on, on this fear of a man and a woman, um, she says, I'm delighted to find the following that uh, in that invaluable work entitled The Young Ladies Counselor by Reverend Daniel Wise AM, it can be obtained at any Methodist uh, book rooms. Permit me by way of illustration, another feature of this question to lead you into the sitting room of a respectable and pious lady. So being pious does do, not just mean taking the Bible and putting there the concordance and the commentaries and the dif uh, different uh, uh, um, references and then uh, trying to write up an article or trying to make up a someone. We are going to see exactly what it means to be indeed pious, what it means to be indeed pious. Some people actually uh, uh, think that uh, being pious means that uh, uh, being studying the word of God and nothing but studying the word of God. But this, they err in that not knowing what being uh, pious actually uh, means, what it means being pious, it, it means. And so we are having this lady who is pious. She is neatly but plainly attired and is busy with the aid of a servant dusting and cleaning the room 
the doorbell rings and the girl hastens to see who is the visitor. She finds the lady's pastor at the door and without ceremony ushers him into the sitting room. The woman who understands her fear. The lady's face is suffused with blushes as she confusedly lays aside her dusting brush and offers her hand to the minister saying, Sir, I am ashamed you should find me thus. Now look at this answer. The pastor says, let Christ, when he cometh, find me so doing, replied her pastor, replies her pastor. What, sir, do you wish to be found in this simple employment? Honestly inquired the astonished lady. The pastor continues, yes, madam, I wish to be found faithfully performing the duties of my mission as I have found you fulfilling yours. And was not the minister right? He recognized a great but a despised truth. He saw a high moral importance in the humble task of the lady as in the mission of Gabriel of the ancient prophets. So this woman carrying out her daily duty to make the environment fit for the husband to have good health so that he may be a field missionary is fulfilling a duty which is like the duty of angel Gabriel. Think about that for a moment, that a woman who is delightfully doing her normal home duties is fulfilling the duties as it were angel Gabriel on his errand in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation and in other places that she visited the saints and gave information from heaven. Permit me to continue with the sphere of a woman and the sphere of uh, the man. Uh, for both did the will of God in their respective spheres and diversity of sphere does not necessarily involve real inferiority in the employment. Women think that when they are working at home and the man is working in the office that they are inferior to the man. But far be it that, that can be said like that a woman at home playing her home missionary work is less important as a man in the field. In fact, we shall find that the woman at home, she is more important and more noble than the man in the field because the woman at home shapes the character of a nation. She is the one who is nurturing the president of a country. She is the one nurturing the lawyers and she is the one nurturing the future generation while the man is in the field. The lady in her home could exhibit an affection as true and an obedience as sincere as the angel in his sphere. Continued on, it will be difficult to show where in her employment was morally and necessarily inferior to his, inasmuch as the character of an act derives all its moral greatness not from the sphere of the actor, but from it is conformity to the will of God. So it is not just an actor in action, but she is fulfilling the will of God, which is more important than seeking her own will. Do you perceive the bearing of my illustration upon the question of woman's fear? It shows you that your sex is not necessarily inferior to the other because it is called by God and nature to act in a different sphere. Your exclusion from the stage of public life does not imply your inferiority, only the diversity of your powers, functions and duties. Indeed, it will defy the loftiest powers to show where in the work, the mission of the sphere of a woman is a weight beneath that of a more, more bustling and prominent companion man. Now, a very important section we are going to read. What is the sphere of a woman? Home, the social circle. What is her mission? To mold character of Christ, to, mo to mold character, to fashion herself and others after the model character of Christ. What are her chief instruments for the accomplishment of her great work? The affections. Love is the one by which she is to work moral transformations within her fairy circle. 
gentleness, swiftness, loveliness, and purity are the elements of her power. Her place is not on life's great battlefields. Man belongs there. It is for him to go forth armed for it is conflict and struggles to do fierce battle with the hosts of evil that throng our earth and trample upon it is blessings. But woman must abide in the peaceful sanctuaries of home and walk in the noiseless vales, vales of private life. There she must dwell beside the secret springs of public virtue. There she must smile upon the father and the brother, the husband, when returning like a warrior from the uh, fight. Exhausted and covered with the dust of strife, they need to be refreshed by sweet waters drawn from affection spring and cheered to renewed struggle by the music of her voice. There she must uh, rear the Christian patriot and statesman, the self-denying philanthropist and the obedient citizen. There, in our word, she must form the character of the world and determine the destiny of her race. How awful is her mission? What dread responsibility attaches to her work? Surely she is not degraded by feeling such as fear, nor will she be elevated if forsaking it, she will go forth into the highways of the society and jostle with the brothers for the offices and honors of public life. Fame she must occasionally gain, but it will be at the price of her womanly influence. Then a story is given, fancy yourself far out at sea in a noble ship contending with a furious storm. Beneath is one wild, beneath is, beneath is one wild wall of foaming surges. Above the arrays of lightnings like the swords of cherubim, wide brandished, to repel aggression from the heaven's guest. Behold, amidst this scene of grandeur, the stormy petrel gliding, uh, gliding our, the, sorry for that. Uh, and, and we told that um, I like to look at this and then uh, okay, there we have we have it. Sorry, sorry for that, but uh, I'm catching up. Behold, amidst this scene of grandeur the stormy petrel gliding up the face of a huge wave, darting above the form of a breaker or sweeping along the watery valleys as, composed, uh, as compositely and as naturally as it ever swept over the same sea in hour of calm. Behold, to another bird, whirling and darting above the spray with a cry of seeming despair, now flying before a monster sea and anon struggling to keep its weight and weary wings from folding into helpless action. And um, tell me, lady, why this little trembler is in so pitiful a plight, while the stormy petrel gambles freely among the waves? You cannot answer. Then listen. The petrel is in its appropriate sphere. The little trembler is a land bird tempted at first by sunny weather to wander among the island and driven at last by a strong wind to sea. He is out of his sphere and hence his quiet has fled. His song is silent and his life endangered. God made him for the land. The grove is his home and the sphere is among the flowers. It is thus with the entire creation, everything has its own appointed sphere within which alone it can flourish. Men and women have theirs. There are not exceptions to this truth, but examples of it. To be happy and prosperous, they must abide in them. Man is fitted for the storms of public life and like the petrel can be happy amid their rudest surges. 
Woman is formed for the calm of home. She may venture like the land bird to invade the sphere of a man, but she will encounter storms which she is utterly unfitted to meet. Happiness will forsake her breast. Her own sex will despise her. Men will be unable to love her. And when she dies, she will feel an unhonored grave. And so you find the issue of the sphere uh, of a man and the woman very important so as the two to be able to thrive according to the will of God and not according to the plan of man or not according to the plan of a woman. And if we will have an Adventist home, ideal Adventist home that will work, then each of the partner or the spouses, even the children have to understand their sphere so that they may not enter into a sphere that will make them and not be able to perform their duties to the perfection that the Lord wants them to perform. At the end of the day, you will find a man who hates to do something. You will find a woman who hates her home. You will find children who are not enjoying their home because everyone is not in their sphere. They are trying to fit in in an Adventist home, but they cannot because they are not in their own uh, sphere. Continued on, um, uh, we are told, what is Christ waiting for? Christ is waiting for a longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ will be full, will be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own Christ object lessons, page 69. Now, this has not just to do with character-wise at the church level, but it starts at home when his character is reproduced. Christ, imagine one thing like this. If Christ, at the time he was needed to be a high priest, Christ is a prophet, or he is a something else. At the time he is prepared to be doing investigative judgment, he is appearing in the camp as the lamb going to be slain. You know, he will not be understanding his responsibility and his fear at that appointed time. But in First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, we find that, and of the children of Isaac, a man who understood time and what they ought to do, they were 200 amongst them, and the whole Israel was at their command. So understanding your sphere will help you to understand time and what you ought to do, and you can be able to lead others. Just as Christ understands his sphere and the sphere of the church, the Christ will not come to do for the church what it's supposed to do, and he doesn't expect the church to do what he is supposed to do. But we have these marriage, marriages which are to show forth the plan of redemption. A man doesn't understand his fear. A woman doesn't understand his fear. They are bringing the children on this earth who doesn't understand their fear. And you, so you find that the home circle is so confused so that when you come even at the church level, because the home circle is confused, the church also is confused. What we practice at home, I can assure you, is that is what we will practice in, at the church level. And we are told that Christ is waiting with the, a longing desire of the manifestation of himself in his church, and his church starts at home. And so not one in 20 of those who have a good standing with seven-day Adventists living out the self-sacrificing principle of the word of God, that is 1 T632. A true woman, who is this true woman who understands her sphere? We are told who can find a vicious woman for her price is far above rubies, the heart of her husband, Lord safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life because she understands herself and what she is supposed to do. In Adventist home, page uh, 115, because you are looking at the ideal Adventist home, Eve was told of the sorrow and pain that must henceforth be her portion. And the Lord said, thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. In the creation, God had made her the equal of Adam. Had they remained obedient to God in harmony with his great law of love, they would ever have been in harmony with each other. 
but sin had brought discord and how their union could be maintained and, harm, uh, and harmony preserved only by submission of the part of the one or the other. And so uh, Eve had been the first in translation and she had fallen into the temptation by separating from her companion contrary to the divine direction. And you find most of the time women are leaving their sphere and they go to jostle and scramble in the sphere of the men. What only arises is uh, women who are tired, they cannot serve at their own houses. They employ the maid and the maid steps in as the woman of the home, albeit that she, she cannot share the bed with the man. But everything the maid is doing is the work that belongs to a woman. And so no wonder I'm not giving an excuse for uh, fornication and adultery, but uh, because women get married, they don't understand their sphere. They bring in the lady. The lady plays the part of the wife in the home apart from the marital bed. And then the man gets attracted to the house help because she, he doesn't see the difference between this house help and the wife. Only that he paid the dowry for the other woman, but this one she is paying, he is paying a, 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 a monthly salary. No different at all because the housemaid is doing totally everything that belongs to the wife and not to the house help. I tell you, we are having marriages that uh, really has even made us not to make the Church of Christ uh, be perfect. And uh, they have created an atmosphere where adultery and fornication is practiced. If it is not literally and physically, it is practiced in the mind rather than uh, uh, being practiced literally. And so it was by her solitation that Adam sinned and she was now placed in subjection to her husband. Had the principles enjoined in the law of God been cherished by the fallen race, this sentence, though um, growing out of the result of sin, would have uh, proved a blessing to them. But man's abuse of the supremacy thus given him has too often rendered the lot of woman very bitter and made her life uh, a burden. Continued with the ideal Adventist home. Eve had been perfectly happy by her husband's side in, the, in her Eden home, but like restless modern Eves, she was flattered with the hope of entering a higher sphere than that which God had assigned her. In attempting to rise above her original position, she fell far below it. A similar result will be reached by all who are willing to take up cheerfully their duty, life duties in accordance with God's plan. And um, you find one thing in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 14 Satan wanted to rise high above what he was supposed to do but he came low on the earth and that is what is happening at marriage circles men would want to be what they were not supposed to be women would want to be what they are not supposed to be and instead of rising higher and higher they are going low and low and the same thing is repeated over and over again. When Eve tried to be what she was not meant to be, she brought about sin. So understanding our spheres and being contented with it is something so good because it works towards the perfection of the church. So like restless modern Eve, she was flattered with the hope of entering a higher sphere than that which God had assigned her. In attempting to rise above her original position, she fell far below it. A similar result will be reached by all who are unwilling to take up cheerfully their duties in accordance to the plan, go in accordance with God's plan. Adventist home, page 115. Husband and wife. Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject there to their own husbands in everything. Submit to be subordinate, to place in order or rank below something else, to be under obedience to. And Ephesians 5.22, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The, the work of the man in his sphere is to make sure that he is not subjecting the wife to enter into an sphere which will bring temptation to the house and cause uh, 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 um, sadness, unhappiness, 
and uh, not serving each other here free. The man has to make sure that the wife is protected. The wife is not just to submit to the man and be able to do everything that the man wants, yet the man is not acting as Christ acts for the church that he has died for. And so it's a two-way road that uh, everyone has to understand their duties, have to understand their spheres, if perfection shall be gained both at home levels and when perfection is gained at home level. Imagine this, you have a perfect family, uh, one perfect family, another perfect family, and another perfect family coming together as a church. You have a perfect church. But when you have this home in quarrel and another home in quarrel and another in quarrel, it's like these issues we find that uh, the husband is on the pulpit preaching, the wife is in the congregation and she is just talking to other people and the, the, the husband is the one on the pulpit. She have not learned subjection at home. She will never learn subjection even when the husband is on the pulpit. Instead of keeping silent because the Lord is in his house, the Bible says so. She is the one making noise and she is the wife to the pastor. She is the wife to the elder. She has never learned subjection at home. And when you approach her and ask, Madam, why are you speaking? And even it's your own husband who is speaking. And she is like, I know him so well. He's not converted. You are saying he's not converted, yet he is married to you. He has married you and uh, he is the priest at home. So how do you ex expect others to listen to him if you yourself can listen to him? You are saying he's unconverted. And the, in, in the truest sense, he may not be converted or he may be converted, but this woman is just stiff naked. Or you find this woman who is serving the Lord and the man is so negligent about it, he is giving her a very hard problem, making the woman a home missionary, being welcoming, getting the visitors, the orphans at home. The, the man is just uh, 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 stiff naked and will do nothing to help this woman. And uh, then he makes the sphere of woman so hard in that he renders this woman uh, uh, um, uh, uh, unprofitable to the society because he will not support her in her sphere. And this is how families are being run. And then you come to the church setup, you find that what is at home has been transferred in the church and you are having a church completely confused and not fulfilling the work of Christ. I believe that uh, uh, if our homes will be Adventist home, then we shall have Adventist churches. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the uh, Lord, uh, the church. And to nourish is to rear up, to maturity, to cherish and to train. Cherish is to treat with tenderness and affection, to give warmth, ease and comfort to. And so Ephesians 5, 31 and 33, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That is actually the mystery of the Christ and the church. And this is being quoted in the book of uh, Genesis. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Ephesians 5, 31, 33, quoting actually the book of Genesis uh, chapter 2. Nevertheless, let everyone of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverences the husband. Everyone working in his fear. Reverend is to fear mingled with respect and esteem, admiration, something great with love and affection. Man is the priest of the home. Let us try to enter into these nitty gritties as we look at the last few points uh, uh, as we, we finish this uh, uh, fourth part of this series. To the man who is a husband and a father, I will say, be sure that a pure holy atmosphere surrounds your soul, a priest and a husband. You need your family together. Of your family, you are to learn daily of Christ. Never, never are you to show a tyrannical spirit in the home. The man who does this is working in partnership with satanic agencies. Bring your will into submission to the will of God. Do all in your power to make the life of your wife pleasant and happy. That is the Southern work, January 19, 1904. Household and teacher. The father is to be the household 
band of the family. This is his position. And if he's a Christian, he will maintain family governing, government. In every respect, his authority is to be recognized. Review and Herald, March 13, 1894, continued on in 10 MR 179. The husband is the house band. The husband, the priest of the household, and the wife is the teacher. As she shall fill her place in the household, whatever may be her employment, if she has children to nurse and take care of, let me tell you there is a lesson there, or oh, such a lesson that God wants everyone to learn. The wife united with the husband in the fear of God is to be a strength and power in the church. You get that? That what this woman is at home, she will be a strength to the husband in the church. You see how these thematic connections fit together in the plan of redemption. In Christ redeeming the church, he set upon the earth the marriage institution so that the way man and woman will deal together as a husband and wife will reflect how Christ deals with the church. And the same dispositions practiced at home will be transferred in the church and either it will work for good or it will work for bad. And so it is us to ask ourselves, in my marriage, am I really prospering the church of God or am the cause of it is failure? We only think of marriage like I'm dealing with my wife and my wife is dealing with me and we don't go beyond how is our marriage affecting the church sphere and the plan of redemption. If we approach the marriage institution as if we were approaching the plan of redemption, we will be so careful in how we enter into this institution and how we behave to, towards each other. Continuing on, I have a lot of material, but time running short. We are told, appreciate each other. Let each give love rather than exact it. Now, you understand force is the last resort of every false religion. If force is the last resort of every religion, if force is the last resort of every false religion, then force in the home circle is the last resort of a bad marriage. Cultivate that which is noblest in yourselves and be quick to recognize the good qualities in each other. The consciousness of being appreciated is a wonderful stimulus and satisfaction. Sympathy and respect encourage the striving after excellence and love itself increases art, it stimulates nobler aims. This is Minister of Healing, page 361. Do not try to compel. Christ never forces anyone to salvation. He entreats. He says, behold, I knock at the door. He doesn't say, here I am, I'm going to force it open. But we come into the marriage relation and we want to force our partners to do some things. Yet Christ never forces the door of anyone to open. He, he is entreating. By his spirit, he is wooing the heart to himself. And so even in the marriage relation, we are told, do not try to force out things. Do not try to compel. Neither the husband nor the wife should attempt to exercise over the other and arbitrary control. Do not try to compel each other to yield to your wishes. You cannot do this and retain each other's love. Be kind, patient, and forbearing, considerate, and courteous. By the grace of God, you can succeed in making each other happy as in your marriage vow you promised to do. Ministry of Feeling, page 361. Stand unequal to her husband. The woman is not inferior to the husband. Let that one be understood from the days that sin was not on the earth and even after the sin came into the world, the woman is not inferior to the husband, but this does not mean equality and jostling and 
fighting for the same positions. In fact, if everyone plays his or her own sphere, you shall never see any person inferior to uh, each other. Woman, if she is wise, if she wisely improves her time and her faculties, relying upon God for wisdom and strength, may stand on an equality with her husband as an advisor, counselor, companion, and co-worker, and yet lose none of her womanly grace or modesty. Why should not women cultivate the intellect? Why should they not answer the purpose of God in their existence? Why may they not understand their own prayer powers? And realizing that these powers are given of God, strive to make use of them to the fullest extent in doing good to others, in advancing the work of reform, of truth, and real goodness in the world. Evangelism, page 467. The Lord has a work for women as well as for men. They may take their places in his work at this crisis, and he will work through them. If they are imbued with a sense of their duty and labor under the influence of the Holy Spirit, they will have just the self-possession required for this time. The Savior will reflect upon these self-sacrificing women the light of his countenance and will give them a power that exceeds that of men. You see that? That God will be able to give women a power that exceeds that of men if they maintain their, their sphere and understand their duties. What? And it is good this is coming from a woman who is a prophetess and uh, she is not partial in her statements. They can do in families a work that men cannot do, a work that reaches the inner life. They can come close to the hearts of those whom men cannot reach. Their labor is needed. Evangelism 464 to 465. Duties of a woman, very more sacred. And this is what I was saying in. 3T. Three 3T, three page 565. We have an honest desire that woman shall fill the position which God originally designed as her husband's equal. We so much need mothers who are mothers not merely in name, but in every sense that the word implies. We may safely say that the dignity and importance of of woman's mission and distinctive duties are of more sacred and whole character than the duties of man. Now, it doesn't matter however much we'll speak about this and repeat, still women feel that they are inferior and what they are doing at home circle, it is not like what the men are doing in the field. I don't know how we shall change the mentality of women, more so those who are not converted, I know the women who are converted will readily accept what we are studying and they will work towards that. Women who have the cause of God at heart can do a good work in the districts in which they reside. Evangelism, page 465. In the various branches of the work of God's cause, there is a wide field which sisters may do good service for the master. Among the noble women who have had the moral courage to decide in favor of the truth for this time are many who have tucked perception, and good ability, and who may make successful workers. The laborers of such a Christian women are needed. Uh, we have 10 minutes to go. There are women who are especially adapted for the work of giving Bible readings, and they are very successful in presenting the word of God in its simplicity to others. They become great blessing in reaching mothers and their daughters. This is a sacred work, and those engaged in it should receive encouragement. Wonderful is the mission of the wives and mothers and the younger women workers. If they will, they can exact an influence for good to all around them. By modesty in dress and circumspect in deportment, they may bear witness to the truth in its simplicity. A truly converted woman will exact will exert a powerful transforming influence for good. Connected with her husband, she may aid him in his work and become the means of encouragement and blessing to him. When the will and way are brought into subjection to the Spirit of God, there is no limit to the good that can be accomplished. Evangelism, page 467 to 468. And so over and over again, we are seeing the sphere of um, 
this woman is not an inferior position, but it is a position that is more nobler than any other uh, uh, sphere. And uh, another important quote on the sphere of the woman, we are told, those who do the cooking and the other work of the home are as verily engaged in the service of God as are those engaged in Bible work. And they are in greater need of sympathy and, uh, com and compassion. For there is in spiritual lines of work that which keeps the spirit cheered, uplifted, and comforted. And remember, we are all servants. The one who does your housework is no less highly regarded by the Lord than the one whose work is to give Bible readings. Evangelism, page 468. Mother's work. The king upon his throne has no higher work than has the mother. Praise the Lord. The mother is queen of her household. She has in her power the molding of her children's characters that they may be fitted for the higher and immortal life. An angel could not ask for a higher mission. For in doing this work, she is doing service for God. Let her only realize the high character of her task and it will inspire her with courage. Let her realize the worth of her work and put on the whole armor of God that she may resist the temptation to conform to the world standard. Her work is for time and for eternity. In fact, we are told in uh, is it first Timothy chapter 2, verses 11, that uh, she shall be saved through childbearing. I think that verse is minutely understood. You can explore that verse and explode it, that a woman shall be saved through childbearing. It is not just carrying the baby in the womb, but how she nurtures this baby to respect God and to be a preacher in life of the three angels' messages. This is the most noblest work. You look at the work Mary did for Jesus Christ, and it is not more inferior to the work of Angel Gabriel. It is a high work, but uh, how women less understand it. Take troubles to God. A third person is taken into the confidence of the wife and her private family matters are laid open before the special friend. This is the device of Satan to strain the hearts of the husband and wife. Or that um, this will seize what a world of trouble will be saved. Lock within your heart the knowledge of each other's fault. Tell your troubles that alone to God. He can give you right counsel and sure consolation, which will be pure, having no bitterness in it. Admits home 337 to 338. And so <clears throat> instead of looking for solutions and advices, infinite men who will not uh, be able to lead you into fulfilling the uh, that which the Lord meant for you. Seek uh, the Lord in everything, and then uh, you will be able to make an Adventist home that uh, you will not be ashamed of. And so um, another thing you can find in Adventist homepage 332 that uh, 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 you should not be criticizing each other, but you should be having jovial conversation. That uh, whenever you have a conversation, instead of um, posing something in accusatory manner, uh, post it in a question manner, where actually it is not to criticize, but to inquire. And so if you make everything as an inquiry rather than criticism, then you will find that uh, your Adventist home uh, will thrive, and then uh, uh, you will be able to blend with each other. I want to enter into this last segment, the very last of it in this presentation, which is more important. In the home sphere, after everyone understanding their sphere, how should the duties be performed? God does not expect from his children a kingly religion. And so he doesn't expect at home one ruling over the other. He tells the disciples, the people of the world lord over each other, but it shall not be so amongst you. And so 
if in the family circle we'll not practice kingly religion and lordship, then even when we come to the church, we will not have that spirit of kingship and lordship. And so a kingly religion, how does God look at it? Force is the last resort of every false religion. This is science of the time, May 6, 1897, paragraph 16. And so many take it for granted that they are Christians simply because they subscribe to certain theological tenets, but they have not brought the truth into practical life. They have not believed and loved. Therefore, they have not received the power and grace that come through sanctification of the spirit. Men may profess faith in the truth, but if it does not make them sincere, kind, what else? Patient, forbearing, heavenly minded, it is a curse to its possessors and through their influence, it is a curse to the world. The righteousness which Christ taught in conformity of heart and life to the real will of God. Sinful men can become righteous only as they have faith in God and maintain a vital connection with him. Then true godness will elevate the thoughts and ennoble the life. Then the external forms of religion accord with the Christian's internal purity. Then the ceremonies inquired in the service of God are not meaningless rites like those of hypocritical Pharisees. Desire of Ages, page 309 to 310. Jesus takes up the commandments separately and explains the depth, the breadth of their requirement. Instead of removing one jot of their force, he shows how far-reaching their principles are and exposes the fatal mistakes of the Jewish in their outward show of obedience. He declares that by the evil thought or the lustful look, the law of God is transgressed. One who becomes a party to the least injustice in breaking the law and degrading his own moral nature. Murder first exists in his mind. He who gives hatred a place in his heart is setting his feet in the path of the murderer and his offerings are abhorrent to God. Now, we have two laws. Thou shalt love God with all thy soul, with all thy heart, and with all thy mind. And the second is like unto the first, thou shalt love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Who is a neighbor? A neighbor is the person who is in need of help and who is like unto a wife that you have married who can rightly be described as a neighbor. She is the very first person or the very first neighbor that needs your help. So if you don't love your wife as you love yourself, then there is no way you will fulfill the second table of the law of the commandments of God. Love God and love your neighbor and the wife is your first neighbor. If you don't know how to exercise love upon your wife, then it will be so hard to exercise love to your neighbors or even teach the law of God at a church level. And so uh, men may call themselves husbands and wife, but uh, this is the spirit they manifest when they are at home and you can see it. So what if we have the truth, but we deny the truth by the hateful spirit in which we represent it. So what if we have the truth, but we deny it by the cruel, harsh words we use to defend it? We are utterly orthodox in our doctrine, but crucify the truth by the impatient, domineering spirit we manifest to uphold it. And so does Christ need such a spirit to exonerate him? We love the truth and argue about it, protecting the letter of the law, but deny the spirit of the law and crucify Christ by our heartless spirit that bruises the people with class as heathen. The husband is shouting to the wife and the wife instead, uh, in turn, what does she do? She takes a horn speaker and make it even louder into the face of the husband. And this is the kind of marriages we have. And we go to the church board. We go to um, to bible discussions we go to doctrinal discussion and we are like this man and this wife in front of the people we have not subjected to each other in the house and so the same spirit the kingly religion again is goes to the church you go to the church you are the elder and the pastor and you are like if congregation you cannot do this and this then you are not part of this church you, you don't have that redeeming spirit because at home it has lacked. And so in church, it cannot not be there. God cannot supply in church what is wanting at home. Let us be clear on that. If you practice kingly religion at home, be sure that is what you will practice at church. And you are not 
fit to be an official in the church of God. I see. Um, we are told that um, your wife does not venture to open her heart to you, for as soon as she utters a sentiment differing from you, you repel it. You talk so strong that she has no courage to say another word. You are not one in heart. You take a position above her and maintain a bearing as though her judgment and opinion were of no account. You consider your spiritual attainment far advanced of hers. My brother, you do not know yourself. God looks at the heart, not at the words of or profession. The externals do not weigh with God as with men. A humble heart and a contrite spirit God values. Um, our Savior is acquainted with the life of conflicts of every sort. He judges not according to the appearances, but righteously. Your spirit is strong. When you take a position, you do not weigh the matter well and consider what must be the effect of your maintaining your views and in an independent manner, weaving them into your prayers and conversation when you know that your wife does not hold the same views that you do. Instead of respecting the feelings of your wife and kindly avoiding as gentleman would, those subjects upon which you know you differ, you have been forward to dwell upon objectionable points and have manifested a persistency in expressing your views regardless of any around you. You have felt that others has no right to see matters different from yourself. These fruits do not grow upon the Christian tree. In the case of Sister Anne, you did not view these things uh, in their true light. If she had been healed in answer to the prayers of yourself and others, it would have proved the ruin of more than two or three of you. A wise God has oversight of this matter. He could read the motives and purpose of the heart. Lastly, your wife has just as much right to her opinion as you have to yours. Her marriage relation does not destroy her identity. She has an individual responsibility. You will not feel clear till you take things out of her way and manifest toward her a more charitable, Christ-like spirit of forbearance and regard others in the light in which you wish to be regarded. You have yet to learn to let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Be kindly affectionate, affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Testimonies, the church, volume 2, page 418 to 419. It is interesting that Sister White says you can differ with your wife on a doctrine. And instead of forcing on her that doctrine, be humble as a gentleman. Do not go to the church and hammer the doctrine in the presence of your wife who objects to what you are teaching because she is not in harmony with it. You have not sat with her and studied out. Maybe if you could have taken time to listen to what she's saying, you could have come up with a different view or you would have wooed her heart to accept it. But you come up with a doctrine, you haven't studied with your wife and you force it on her. The same thing you are doing to the wife is the same thing you will go to the congregation and start your fancy ideas and force it upon the church and split the church into two. You have split your house into two you have split the church into two. And now the services at the house of God, we are told God does not accept those offerings in Malachi chapter two because you have not offered them at home and be accepted. And men and women, they go and even praise things. They are kneeling down and praying about things that they know their spouses do not agree on it and they expect the wife or the husband to say amen. And that is the same thing. They go into the church, they do that, and they offer a word of prayer, and they're expecting people to say amen. And at the end of the prayer, you don't hear anyone saying amen, and you wonder what is happening. Whatever you are practicing in home is what will happen in the church. If we will have a perfect church, let us have a perfect Adventist home. May the Lord bless us with these words. May we contemplate upon them and may we give our hearts to the Lord anew so that he may work in us. We may not be found to be the stumbling blocks to the people who are seeking salvation. Because we have become stumbling blocks to our spouses, we also become stumbling blocks to the church of God. Look at this scenario. Your wife is talented in doing this and this. 
you have become a stumbling block to her. Now she cannot practice that thing in church because this very person who should be supporting her to do that, he is not supporting her. Your husband is killed in this and this. As a wife, you have become a stumbling block. And then this man doesn't have even courage to stand on the pulpit and say something because he knows somebody is in the congregation whom he shares the bed with that, that is not listening, is not doing nothing. And so he lacks this courage even to do the work which God has called him. I pray that we may have an Adventist home so that we may have an Adventist church and may the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Shall we offer a word of prayer? God in heaven, thank you so much. And thank you because you are seeking to restore us. And Father, many of us who are in marriage relation, we have failed terribly. And Lord, what we need is a renewal to take our vows anew once again. And there are those who are contemplating to get into marriage, Lord, how I pray that uh, they may think once again if they have been under the tutorship of the Spirit. Thank you so much this Sabbath that Lord will continue speaking to us. And thank you for those who have been able to listen until this point, Lord, in this series. That Father, this will not just be information, but uh, it will be an experience to me and to all others who are waiting for the second coming of the Son. Bless us and reveal thyself unto us. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.